Good morning traders. It is Tuesday, June the 25th. Taking a look at the charts. This is the weekly chart of the US dollar index. You can see we're trading right in the middle of no man's land. We've got this extreme high, extreme low. Been really chopping around in the middle here. Question is, is the US dollar going to continue to move up or is it going to roll over and head south? If it rolls over and head south, then we're likely going to see uh, stocks and commodities find some uh, buying pressure. If it does hold up and continue to move up with uh, QE easing, uh, looking more likely then we probably see the US dollar continue to move up which will put pressure on both stocks and commodities for um, several uh, several weeks now if we just take a quick look zoom in a little bit at the US dollar index you can see we're ping-ponging around between these levels you gotta think of the stock market the chart as a, a more or less um, apartment building you've got floors and ceilings and you ping pong around between them until you bust through a ceiling and then you'll hit the next ceiling before coming back down and that's more or less how it works once you break through a floor you'll fall to the next floor and then you'll ping pong around in there for a while so that's pretty much how the the market moves around now overall you can see here we had a sharp bounce last week and this week we came up and hit our head on on the roof again resistance starting to come down a little bit this morning probably going to chop around here uh, for a little bit overall this chart is pretty messy not really giving us really a whole lot of insight into where the US dollar is going uh, looking back at the bigger picture uh, again it doesn't really help us uh, figure out where it's going and uh, it hasn't really been much of a help all year so we're just gonna ignore the US dollar index for now until it, it breaks out to uh, new highs form some type of bullish pattern or bearish pattern uh, right now it's more or less in a sideways range and um, we've got this key high this key low and this middle zone that's just kind of bouncing around if we take a look at precious metals here's the gold chart gold and silver under a little bit of pressure yesterday they're relatively flat this morning you can see with that big drop last week kind of uh, sideways chop here I wouldn't be surprised if it tries to find some stability and starts to try and put in a bottom and starts to bounce up come back up to the 1350 which is going to be this little cluster here before it really gave way and sold off looking back here there's also a pivot low and we had a couple uh, candle long candle wicks through this level also which means there was a lot of volume traded down there and buyers stepped back in so now that we're underneath those levels we're going to come up probably and hit our head on that level and it'll act as resistance until that resistance can get eaten through and we see a strong impulse wave to the upside overall though I do think gold and silver are, are uh, trading down a, a fairly as low as they're going to go it's trading at that 1300 mark um, below there really running the stops for gold and I, I feel as though um, as I mentioned before I think we're within a few weeks of gold and silver trying to put in a bottom same with gold miners they really need to run these stops out and really kind of flush the market get investors to truly give up on them and uh, once the majority of people have actually given up that's when you see a bottom in an investment so uh, this new low is kind of grinding I wouldn't be surprised if it maybe even grinds a little bit lower but overall I think it's going to be a slow process and just kind of timing traders out making individual new lows uh, every few days and uh, just enough to make people really give up taking a look at silver here's a silver chart pretty much the same price action kind of flagging and waving its way lower looks as though it could still continue to sell off they are oversold but uh, again they're in a downtrend so they can stay oversold and continue to move down for extended periods of time so we're just going to continue to watch and uh, and see how these things evolve and uh, eventually we're going to need some strong type of impulse wave to the upside uh, with a tight bull flag and uh, we want to also see some big money moving into mining stocks the silver and gold mining stocks to show that there is some power behind the move now if we take a look at the GDX the gold miners they've been under some serious pressure really picking up speed they're uh, down again today and um, we're all still in a sharp downtrend and we're, we're getting a little bit overdone for a bounce it feels as though we're somewhere right around here just like what we've seen previous we're starting to get a little bit of volatility a little uh, kind of clustering going on where we'll see some type of eventually we we'll see a bounce and probably a pause and another little wave up so it'll probably come back up hit its head on 26 possibly come all the way back up to uh, 20 27 or 28 and uh, right through this is going to be a lot of resistance where we've got these key pivot lows and breakdown zones and of course this moving average will eventually come down to that 28 and 27 area over time which will act as more resistance now if we just take a look at the 
the hue, index the gold bug, index, and we just flip to the weekly chart real quick and then zoom way out. You can see where we are um, back in 2008, early, uh, late 2008, we had that big massive sell-off before they had a massive run to the upside. And I've drawn the chart on uh, stock charts, uh, pointing out and posted on the blog a few times that when we get down back into this zone here, which we're just starting to enter this week, that we're starting to get into a pretty uh, uh, good value spot for the gold miners. And it looks as though there's still more momentum to the downside. It feels as though we are somewhere more or less right about here, somewhere in there. And uh, I feel as though there's room for a major flush here. Still to the downside, we could come right down to the 160, test these key pivot lows that we saw back in 2008. And I think it could be a great opportunity for at least a strong bounce in, in gold stocks, if not possibly a major uh, long-term play going forward. So keeping my eye on it, we're starting to get to that level where it's starting to uh, get to a point where for a long-term play, uh, dabble with a small position. Uh, but really, I need we I want to see another, we need a pretty big percentage drop here still to really match these previous lows and to really stretch this into oversold territory. And, um, and and maybe take a dabble for a longer term play, but um, just something I want to keep in mind and, and show you what I'm I'm feeling as though is uh, could very well happen in the gold miners. I know they're down huge, but you got to remember they've done the same move before, and there's no reason they can't do it again. And when people are starting to, most people are starting to think a bottom's coming. Usually that's when you get the biggest move to the downside, and uh, and really. Gives it gets everybody to give up on the investment. So we really need this huge drop, and that will uh, cleanse the chart and more or less set it up for a, a strong rebound that could come up uh, very quickly and post some serious gains. Taking a look at crude oil. Crude oil, this is the weekly chart. Again, we're in this huge range here. Massive sell-off 2008. We've been slowly coming up, chopping sideways in, in within this range for um, the last couple of years. And really, it's starting to get stuck into that apex. Again, we need a clear break to the upside or a clear break down. Uh, a move down would have more potential, in my opinion. I think it's got a lot of room to fall away down around the 65 area, which... Um, could very likely happen but again as we're ping-ponging around in here things become more unstable and volume is slowly if you, if you notice the volume it's slowly starting to, uh, to to ramp up as we're getting into this apex the bulls and bears are struggling more and more eventually we're going to see some type of breakout to the up or down side and we'll be looking to get involved with uh, a fairly significant move that should happen there now if we take a look at natural gas haven't really covered it that much in the last week or two it's starting to look pretty attractive. Um, it has come all the way up at very nice rally, and it's having a nice pullback. We got a nice five wave uh, pullback. We really, we need to see a, some lower lows. If we just zoom in here a bit, you can see here's the one, two, three, four. We have yet to make a lower low. If we can get that lower low flush down into the 360, 350 area, which is the that price level I was talking about a long time ago. We're looking for this sweet, sweet zone. It looks as though the chart wants to go there. We've got um, rising volume, selling volume. People are starting to uh, panic out of their positions. And if we can get one more dip down, I think it's a great opportunity for us to uh, get long for a quick bounce. Uh, that could have some potential, some pretty good potential gains, or we could actually see an extended rally and see natural gas move up uh, sharply to the upside. Now, keep in mind, natural gas generally has been moving this year the opposite as the stock market so the fact the stock market's been going up we've been seeing natural gas flag back and uh, if the equities market continues to sell off we could very easily just see this inverse relationship with natural gas take off to the upside and see another strong move up very similar to what we saw back here eventually it puts in a bottom and you get this long extended move to the upside so I'm starting to get a little interested in natural gas simply because of the wave count and uh, we're coming down into this uh, zone here that starts to look very attractive as oversold and uh, and its support we've got lots of high volume support in here this whole zone coming across 
So that's kind of what I'm looking at going forward for natural gas. Taking a look at uh, the SP500, you can see here these have been the uptrends, and then you start to get the reversals, you get the corrections, and uh, we've now we're at the point where we're starting to get that correction. We're we're starting to the, the question is are we um, more or less going to see it really fall and sell off hard and do most of the downside move with maybe an opportunity to get short near the end catching still a chunk of this drop or are we going to get some type of bounce like this and then we'll be able to catch a much larger percentage of this drop so it's going to be interesting to see how things unfold momentum wise we're we've pretty much run out of momentum on the on the sell side I think I think we're ready for some type of bounce we do have a gap window up here that needs to be filled wouldn't be surprised if price comes all the way up or at least to the uh, edge of that the bottom of that window and uh, this 20-day moving average will be rolling down it should act as resistance we'll probably have a shorting opportunity and any bounce that happens now we're probably going to see some pretty strong selling step in so we're going to be uh, keeping our eyes peeled for a setup and, um, and getting ready to go short the indexes using an inverse ETF if we just take a look at the futures for this morning on the SP500 let me just go into current time here. We're starting to get uh, some chop. You can see we're getting spike lows, bounce, spike low, bounce, new spike low. This type of price action is very, uh, it's a, kind of a signature bottom. It's starting to form. And yesterday we had that that morning sell-off. And then right around noon, as prices were making new lows on lighter volume, and then we got that strong a morning bounce and then an end of day continuation of that uh, kind of trend selling off into the close and overnight trading it's been choppy trading within yesterday's range but now it's coming right back up this morning to test uh, yesterday's high and then this could be the start of that bounce that we're looking for we could get a couple day bounce here where we'll eventually we'll get a shorting play and we'll see the market have another big move to the downside now just looking at this chart zooming out if we do get this bounce we could easily see it come back up somewhere into this area there's high volume resistance here there's a 20-day moving average and uh, if it does come up to that level it could be an opportunity for us to take it short and we could see a nice move uh, back down to test these lows or go much much lower and one last chart to look at here's the bond chart bonds had a pretty strong recovery uh, yesterday really have sold off hard with the the uh, potential easing of QE uh, if we just go to the daily chart you get a good view of the reversal candle you can see this candle went way down got bought right back up and this morning it's starting to continue up if this has a bounce uh, like it looks like it could we probably come back up to the 38 level which is going to be this pivot low and this candle here and of course this candle high so they're probably going to start to stall out around 137.75, 138, somewhere in there where it could chop around for a while, maybe put in a W type bottom and try and f form eventually some type of bottoming pattern before it moves up and equities start to sell off even more. Anyways, that's it for this morning, and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye bye.